All right, I gotta take a break from digging and I'm gonna do something I've been meaning to do for a while. Okay, I've got this, this boat right in front of me, this boat here. Here, let's, let's take a good look at it. That's a good looking boat. Oh yeah, that is, a, that is a good looking boat. Man, look at that thing. Uh, I've been driving this boat a lot. So right now I drive this boat a lot and also this, this little guy here. If I'm going somewhere just by myself and I'm not getting much cargo or anything, I'll take the little fast boat. But I'm often with a pile of kids or picking up some junk or whatever. So I've been driving this boat a lot. And I did a time trial in this boat a little while ago. And okay, this is, this is the boat I was driving before. It's just chilling right now. In that boat, I made it to where I pick up packages in three hours and 20 minutes. And then, and I was hoping to match that time in this boat. And then I could get there and back in the same amount of time with like five times the amount of cargo weight, space, whatever. Not space, but maybe even five times. Anyway, I can hold a lot more cargo in this boat. Um, but when I went, it took three hours and 40 minutes in this boat. So 320 and then 340. Now, since then, I've uh, carved off some of the barnacles on the bottom of the boat. Because, you know, every time I take the boat out and I go for a swim, I'll... I'll grab my little scraper here, and pick a little section on the bottom of the boat and smooth it out a bit. So I'm pretty sure I've increased the speed on this boat some, but there is another thing that I want to do. Okay, let's go back to where the motor is back here. You know, we can see it well enough from here. Now let's go back. Okay. So this is, this is, uh, just ignore my super fancy motor cover. Let's get it off. Yes, it's just a bucket. So this bottom part is from like a 15 or a 20 horsepower gas motor. And then I made this and put an electric motor on top of it. So uh, this actually came from a broken motor. So it was already pretty used and I think it's starting to leak oil a little bit and it's starting to make funny sounds. You know, it's still working, but I don't know. It's also, I'm pretty sure, not optimized. Because this is just a motor that I got and push, just put it on this thing. I didn't, I didn't do any kind of scientific calculations for RPMs versus power or whatever. It just, it's just the motor I put. So I'm sure it's not, you know, optimized for this propeller size and blah, 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 whatever. There is another motor. Let's just go back over here a bit. This motor that's on on the other boat. So this is the boat I was driving a lot for a while. Um, this motor here, I'm pretty sure outperforms the one that I currently have on this boat. And I think that for a couple reasons. I mean, one, I just kind of get that feeling. But also, this thing is all you know, engineered at some place. I'm sure they put the appropriately sized motor with the right RPMs and whatever for this propeller and whatever, whatever. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this, this motor outperforms the one I have on the boat currently. And since I'm not using this boat, I want to steal that and put it on here. However, it doesn't currently fit because this motor has, you know, the standard clamp on to the transom of a... And yet back here, I've got this fancy thing that makes it easy to raise and lower the motor. So uh, right here, there's, the, there's this fiberglass pipe thing that I made, right? And this thing can slide up and down and it's got some pulleys and ropes so it's easy to pull the whole thing up and out of the water. So I have to decide if I want to try to make that other motor fit into this somehow or if I want to like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can just clamp right onto, right onto here somewhere. Is this thing strong enough? I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, it'll probably be all right. Okay, first thing, I should just get that motor off and bring it over and just, just take a look. Uh, it should be enough. Hopefully I'll be back in a minute with that thing over. Okay, that was a bit of a struggle, but I got it. 
as, uh, as expected, these things are really corroded in here. They didn't, yeah, I couldn't loosen those, so I just had to like rawr, wrestle the thing off the transom. Luckily, I had the foresight to put a few little pieces of wood here and there so it wouldn't damage the transom, just those garbage pieces of wood. Okay, now let's, let's see, what do I do with this thing? I love these propellers. Look at the size of that thing. This is great. <laughs> All right, I gotta get this thing into the shade. Oh man, the sun has been brutal lately. I had this string on here to prevent this thing from steering because on the other boat, uh, this didn't do any steering. I just needed to stay straight. So let's get this off because I will use the steering features on this boat. How are you going to attach them over? How am I going to attach it? I don't, I don't know. Are you uh, going to tie it on? Tie it on? No, I'm not going to tie it on. <laughs> let's, let's get this string off then we can... I don't know, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look at it and see what ideas we can come up with. Or I can come up with. Maybe you can give me some ideas too. Alright, I got the string off. Now the steering, basically this part rotates. Well this part really stays stationary, the rest rotates. Oh man. Oh wow. Is that that's yeah, that should be able to Oh wow, that is really stuck. <laughs> All right, so maybe this. Maybe that does not rotate anymore. All right, this this whole section is like seized on, and I tried pretty hard to get it moving. So I think I'm just gonna angle grind down here, and then on the other side. And then hopefully just take that right off without damaging, you know, this this part that goes through there. Yeah, I can do that. Hey, how you know the spark saw? Yes, the spark saw, not not the angle grinder. Sorry, the spark. I barely touched the middle part. Did get a little bit, but. Are you gonna uh, attach a different one? <laughs> Man, that was a thick piece of metal. What kind of metal is it? Is it rusty metal? No, it's aluminum. It's aluminum, aluminum. Right? No, it's a kind of impressed stone. with this. What? This wheel. It went through the aluminum pretty well. Because these get gummed up really easily. All right. I there was a collar here, I cut that off too. So now I've got a, just a tube here. And I measured on the other motor from the top of the propeller up to where it bolts onto the, the, you know, the next part. And so it's from here to here and that part is like somewhere out here. So basically, if I can make something that fits around here, comes out, then has a flat part here, that's you know, right at this level, then I should be able to bolt it onto the existing stuff. And then, you know, if I make it kind of loose, then it can rotate here, and that will work well for the steering. I don't even know if I have any. Kind of a weird size, but all right, let's go. Look in my PVC scrap zone here. Wait a minute. This is not too far off. All right, I'll have to melt this a bit to get it to fit. However, okay, the purpose of this is to basically just put something on here that this can rub against and kind of wear against a little bit. Uh, that's not going to cause any more corrosion. The, this is aluminum aluminum, I'm pretty sure. And against plastic, it's fine. 
Um, now if I make this other part out of metal, I would not want that in contact with this because then it'll they'll have corrosion issues. So I definitely want a plastic sleeve on here. All right, so what I need to make is not that complicated. Okay, and then over here, let's see what kind of perspective we can do here. Yeah, that's basically it. You know, this has some kind of thickness, of course. And uh, so the, the motor part, that pipe goes through here. And maybe I'd want to make this in two pieces. So this is disconnected and, you know, can bolt together so I can take it off and on. Maybe? I don't know. I don't even know if I need to do that. Okay, to be totally honest, I'm sick of fiberglass, so I want to do this out of stainless steel. The only concerns I have with stainless steel is if I have two thin sheets of steel here, then this part might, might be too flexible, it might be too easy to bend. There are a few different ways I could deal with that. Well, I'm thinking, oh, let's see, this would have a... Okay, so basically one piece would go across here and then fold out. The other piece would go across here and fold out. Yeah, so like one piece like that. Another piece like that. And then bolted, 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 and then bolted, bolted. bolted. Okay, so this part here, I want to make sure it's not too flexible and flimsy. So maybe there's a, some kind of sheet of something that I could put in there. You know, kind of like a board, but not a wood one, because I don't want to make something that's going to rot. Of course, this would work great. However, there's no way I'm using that on this particular thing. It is too valuable. Um, even though I have a whole other piece, man, that stuff is so nice. I save it for really nice stuff, um, where I really need the strength. But this particular piece does not need that much strength. It's just going to be sandwiched between two sheets of metal to just kind of give some rigidity. I mean, I could almost use like a piece of foam or something, but it's got to be stronger than that. Oh, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Is that what I think it is? I think that's what I think it is. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So this is very similar to that other piece piece of plastic that there's no way I was going to use it, but this is way crappier and old and has been used and has cracks, not nearly as strong, but this does not have to be strong. I can definitely use a piece of this on it. Okay, I went out and did some measurements. This is like two and a half to three inches across here, and the thickness here is fine if I've got that chunk of plastic in, there's plenty of space for it. So I think I think I've got a plan. Well, obviously here's my new material that I preferably don't have to use. And over here we've got the garbiola. Yeah, should be able to get something out of here. All right, I just took a hacksaw and cut that to the right length. Yes, I did. Good. And then cut a slit down one side. And now what's next? I heated up the pipe, wrapped it around here, and I was really hoping to have these ends flare out, and then the other one flare out, and then they just match up. Uh, but it was, it was just too hard to manipulate. So I just wrapped it around. It's overlapped, and it's overlapped by that much right there. So now I'm thinking, if I cut this top layer off right there, then this should match up with the piece there. Someone was asking a while ago what discs I'm using that are going through aluminum, aluminum pretty well. So this is what I used yesterday. All right, let's see how we did there. Oh. Oh. 
Lift that shut. That is about perfect. Ooh, I don't want to change that at all. Yeah. It's a tiny bit snug, but easily rotates. Good. Well, I found this in my scrap metal. And it looks like it might be the perfect size. Oh, wow. That is, yeah, if I cut that right down the middle, that should be perfect. And it looks like it's about the right size to wrap around there and have the right distance. All right, let's see how far this is around. Okay, eight and three quarter noodles. Okay, eight and three quarters all the way around. So if I take one of the pieces, it's four and three eighths halfway around. I'm gonna put the chunk of metal in, which is three quarters all the way across. So half of it will be three eighths, so I can take that three eighths off. So I've got four imperial noodle units there to there. I probably wanna take off like an eighth just to make sure it's not too loose. Because if it's a little bit too tight, I can just put a washer in there. I'd rather, okay, so three and seven eighths. Okay, noodles. Okay, say we use this lip as the part here that bolts it together at the end. And then let's measure how far it is. Oh, I love this thing. Thank you to the person who sent this to me. I also have a, a sheet metal bender and a pipe bender I have to set up still. I'm excited about those. Right, curve, stinky brains. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> that was pretty good, man. All right, thanks. Trim up that little edge too. Dee, dee, dee. What do I want to do here? Somewhere between two and a half and three inches. All right, two and three quarters. Oh wow, that is a good looking piece of hardware right there. Man, I hope it works. <laughs> All right, hopefully I can leave those two bolts in at the back and just kind of spread this open enough and force it on. Oh, nice. All right, how many bolts do we want over here? I guess three, three. I've left more space than I needed. 
which isn't a problem, that's fine. All right, just need a spacer in there. All right, let's see, these nuts fit on there. And okay, yeah, that's about right. Loosen it up a bit. Why am I going through from the bottom to the top? Because all of these went through that way. It totally doesn't matter. But I want to keep them all the same. And this one's got a lock nut. Just because I think these ones are most likely to come loose. If anything's going to come loose. Well, that looks great! And I probably should have put some grease in there before I... <laughs> just, ah, maybe I can stuff a bit up there. So I'll just put a, a bit of oil in there and it'll drip down. Okay, I got the old motor off. And the thing I noticed about this is it is way heavier. The motor ends about the same. But down here, all this stuff, oh, so much heavier than this. All right, looks like I made things about right. Yeah. Oh. Well, that looks about perfect. Just held on with my vice grapes right now. So, uh, all I have to do is put a few holes in. And my bolts. Ah, it's some good looking stuff. Alright, I guess I better check that this motor actually works. I haven't used it in months. It should be fine. I hope. Okay, I'm just kind of resting those on there. I'm not going to bolt them in yet. I don't even know if they're connected the right direction. But let's... Oh, whoa! That is awesome! I'll tell you what's awesome in a second. So, right now it's, it's sprinkling, it's raining. There's hardly any sun out. And when I, when I move this switch forward, when it contacts right here, that connects a couple solar panels. And it doesn't get to the batteries till I'm connecting way up here. And I already turned on the battery switch because I presumed, based on my last motor, that it wouldn't do anything on the solar panels in this low light, but it looks like, it looks like this motor has a way lower startup amperage. So that's great. Um, that, that is really good. Oh man, all right. Uh, let me screw those in. The propeller was turning the right direction. Um, so I can screw my wires and everything. And I have a little motor for the cover. Right, let me put the rest. Oh, come on. A little... I moved this a little bit and it tightened it on here. That still moves. Come on. Get in there. Definitely low enough. <laughs> oh, you gotta see this. Okay, look. I might have to use this to help clean out my canal, because watch this. Isn't that crazy? Shoving everything all the way over there. Alright, Oh, I gotta go for a test drive now. Oh, that came out so good. Oh, okay, let's go. We gotta test drive. Uh, where am I gonna go? I don't know. Who cares? Wait a minute. I still have to connect the steering. <laughs> Alright, hopefully it's really easy to connect. Let's well, this has already got a hole right here. Put a bolt through. Kind of want to trim some of this off though. Yeah, that would be good. It might even be good to put a hole a little further up. 
Oh, hacksaw. All right. Got it. Probably don't even need a screw. Well. Oh, you got a sticky spot. Come on. What I've been doing with my steering is I just slide that on. Call it good enough. This. I like. I want. I need it to be easy to get off. Because uh, I don't want to leave that on when I lift the motor. Right now, this hole is a little tight. No offense there, man. Loosen you up a bit. Well, that's what I call some steering right there. Beauty. Oh man, that was great. Now it keeps my wires up there. I should have done that ages ago. Yeah. Oh, I just wiped off my camera lens. I had some grease on there. I think that's better. All right, Ocean. Let's see what's going on. Doing a bit of reversing back there. 